Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Top Stories. In light of worsening climatic conditions, the government of St. Lucia looks to rainwater harvesting. Legislative powers have been given to combat noise pollution. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle en Quayon. As the government of St. Lucia celebrates the contribution and dedication of public servants to national development through Public Service Week, Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas has applauded the architectural section in physical planning. Minister Stanislas says the unit is staffed with design talent for the building of a modern St. Lucia. Janelle Norville explains. Unsung heroes of the architectural section of the Department of Physical Planning have been bestowed the highest of praises. Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Herod Stanislas, indicated that the section has been delivering a high quality of work and commended the men and women of the section on their continued dedication. The minister, highlighting the section's work on the Old Trafford complex in Sufra, indicated that he has been amazed with the work produced. My department physical planning is um, made up of about six or seven sections. One of them is the architecture section, which is uh, one of the best sections, a section that I love in the department. You know, the architects, they do a wonderful job, the chief architect and his um, team of men and women. And they are currently supervising and implementing the Old Trafford project in Sofia, the first phase. This is ongoing. This should be completed by the end of June. And I'm very proud of the work which they put into this project. When it is completed, people will actually see what this department does on a daily basis. Members of cabinet along with the executives of the Castries Constituency Council and staff of the Department of Physical Planning got a first-hand tour of the progress of the Old Trafford Complex. Phase one of the project includes the construction of a central bus terminal and the farmer's market. Minister Stanislas explained that the architectural section is also working on a number of other projects. They've also put some um, concepts um, for Minister Fede for the ancillary waterfront redevelopment. They're currently working on a redevelopment um, concept for Grosile for Minister Motut. And we have been down to Schwezel to look at the Schwezel village, the waterfront for Minister um, Felix, Bradley Felix. So the guys are very busy downstairs working to enhance and transform the landscape of this country to create opportunities and empowerment of our people. So I'm very proud of the work of the architecture section. They have been provided with many resources to get the job done, and I will continue to support them as a minister in the department and hope that other ministries and other agencies could gravitate towards the architecture section and help in some of the buildings and the architecture works which we are going to be doing in the country. The planning department's mandate is to ensure the sustainable improvement in the quality of life of all St. Lucians through effective integrated planning, coordination, implementation and monitoring of physical, spatial, technological, economic, environmental and social development activities. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. In light of worsening climatic conditions, the Government of St. Lucia, through the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, recently held a workshop to certify plumbers and contractors in the modern art of installing rainwater harvesting systems. Rainwater harvesting is regarded globally as a low-cost response to reducing the impacts of climate change for individuals and across all sectors, including agriculture, health and tourism. More from Lucia Doxery of the DVRP. One of the critical areas being given attention by the government of St. Lucia through the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, DVRP, is the water sector. In that regard, much focus is being paid to the climate resilient rehabilitation of the country's water supply infrastructure. This includes the development of the millet water intake within the John Compton Dam raw water supply system, the procurement and installation of meters for WASCO's non-revenue water program, and initiatives to encourage the proper collection, storage and use of rainwater for portable and non-portable uses. 
remarking on a 4-day DPRP-funded training workshop for plumbers and contractors on the design and installation of rainwater harvesting systems that ended last Friday, Priscilla M. Phelps, advisor from the World Bank Group, made the following observations. St. Lucia is advancing very rapidly in terms of making the resources available for businesses and households to install rainwater harvesting systems. We had the opportunity to observe a group of technical professionals on the island being trained in the design and installation of rainwater harvesting systems. Noting that one of the objectives of the training workshop was to introduce contractors and plumbers to safety measures in rainwater harvesting, including the first flush device, consultant for the training workshop Lester Arnold says he is optimistic that the participants, who displayed a high level of interest throughout the workshop, will contribute meaningfully through exposing the first flush device for rainwater harvesting systems to the wider population. Nearly everyone here did indicate that at some point in time they will put a rainwater harvesting system at the house, especially as it relates to the whole question of the first flush device, which they never knew existed. The participants who hail from various communities throughout the country were thrilled not only to obtain new information on installing the first flush device for rainwater harvesting systems, but also about the positive impacts of collecting and storing rainwater as a climate change adaptation measure. That way. So if more people can understand the usefulness of water harvesting, in addition to providing water for domestic use, various uses of flushing of toilets, washing of clothing and so on, but additionally, it contributes to um, a reduction in things like land slippage and flash flooding. Director of the Water Resource Management Agency, WRMA, Jason Ernest, says the rainwater harvesting system workshop for plumbers and contractors was constructive. He says the WRMA hopes to see the development of standards for a national vocational qualification, NVQ, for rainwater harvesting systems. Some benefits of uh, NVQ are enhanced employability, higher earning potential, and an alternative route to higher education. At this point, we're very satisfied with the, the level of training that the participants received. Um, it was not only a theoretical class, but there was a practical exercise where they could have actually seen an entire um, rainwater harvesting system in the in the classroom every dvrp funded facility constructed to date namely the denry infant school and the two newly reconstructed blocks at the shosel secondary school incorporates the rainwater harvesting system other facilities earmarked for similar systems at the denry polyclinic and the miku secondary school you may have heard of the Saharan dust that is blowing across the tropical Atlantic and affecting the Caribbean and other countries. Most of the Saharan dust is formed between November and April in the Saharan desert located in the African continent and moves out across many West African countries and the Atlantic Ocean. Dr. Glensford Joseph, medical surveillance officer in the epidemiology unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, says this dust pollutes the atmosphere with tiny dust particles and reduces the air quality. Breathing in this dust, it would get into the lung and also into the bloodstream. Persons with pre-existing conditions like allergies, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that is, persons who have damage to the lung as a result of smoking, and persons with certain heart conditions, as we call cardiovascular diseases, are at risk for the negative impact of this Saharan dust. Persons not diagnosed with asthma may develop symptoms like shortness of breath, chest tightness, and coughing. Persons, for instance, who have allergies can experience itching, teary eyes, discomfort to the throat, 
Asthmatics can experience worsening in their condition. And it is important to note that some persons who are not diagnosed with asthma may develop shortness of breath, that is difficulty breathing, chest tightness, and a cough. The ministry encourage persons with pre-existing condition to ensure that you utilize the medication as prescribed by your healthcare provider. Persons with pre-existing conditions, as mentioned, should avoid strenuous outdoor activity once informed about the passage of the Saharan dust. The Parliamentary Representative for Castry Central, Honorable Sarah Flood Bobra, has welcomed the recent amendments to the Public Health Act, CAP 1101, more specifically activities that have been deemed as having an effect on public health. One such activity is noise pollution, which can affect both health and behavior. Research shows that noise pollution can cause hypertension, high stress levels, hearing loss, as well as sleep disturbances. Honorable Flood Bobra was satisfied that the country's public health legislation now recognize that noise levels, which are unacceptably high, can cause serious health problems. I've got a serious problem in my constituency and I've received letters and petitions and emails. I've had to have meetings with the Castry City Council and with the Housing Authority and with the police because I have many complaints from my constituents about the level of noise within the city. Now we all appreciate that if one lives in the city, one should expect to have more noise than usual. But the level of noise within the city and in some neighborhoods in, in St. Lucia is unacceptable and it's causing a health problem for many of our citizens. Minister Flood Bober also welcomed the extension of powers to public health officers. That they can take equipment onto various premises, whether it be to measure noise levels, whether it be to take samples of whatever is happening there, so that we can enforce the legislation. And that was the Castries Central MP and Minister with Responsibility for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Bober. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The world's climate is changing, and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate, and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change, and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms, and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Misha. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Welcome to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. As we approach this year's CARICOM 10K, we tell you some more on the background of this event. The idea of a CARICOM road race was first mooted in 2005 at a meeting of staff members of the Directorate of Human and Social Development, HSD, of the CARICOM Secretariat, along with well-known sports commentator and consultant, Joseph Reds Pereira. The meeting decided to stage several events aimed at not only reintroducing the CARICOM Secretariat sports desk to the region, but also to use the convening power of sports to bring the region's people together. 
The decision to plan the race was also in keeping with the fact that the United Nations General Assembly had designated 2005 as International Year of Sports and Physical Education. The CARICOM Secretariat is charged with coordinating the race in partnership with the member states in which the Heads of Government Summit is being held. The first 10K road race took place in Castries, St. Lucia. It's back in St. Lucia again this year. In last year's event, Vincentian athlete Linda McDonnell copped her second title in the women's leg of the annual CARICOM 10K race in Montego Bay, Jamaica, with a winning time of 39 minutes 50 seconds. This was slightly slower than the 37.57 run for her first title in 2016 in Guyana. Second place went to Grenadian Kenesha Pascal, who crossed the finish line in 40.21, while third place went to Carly Pipe of Barbados, 46 minutes 12 seconds. Jamaica took the top two places in the men's leg of the event. Dwayne Graham won in a time of 34.15, and Ocean Archibald took second place, 34.19. The run brings together professional and amateur athletes in the region in one single space to give voice to the positive influence of sport and physical education on the quality of life and in the promotion of peace and cooperation. Its overall intention to promote a culture of healthy lifestyle. It is part of the pre-event of the annual regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government and is held in the host member state. An update now on the annual School Sports Awards being staged by the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports in collaboration with the Ministry of Education. Organizers have decided to introduce a new category of awards this year, which will go to the best performing district at the primary school level. Over the past year, the Ministry has placed great emphasis on sporting competition at the grassroots level to ensure emerging talent is constantly tapped. This year's School Sports Awards will be held at the St. Mary's College Auditorium on Friday starting at 10 a.m. Staff of the Ministry are continuing preparations for a smooth and successful hosting of the event. Schools and individual student athletes will be recognized for their outstanding performances in school sports events over the past year. Minister responsible for Education, the Honorable Gail Rigobert, and Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, are expected to deliver addresses as well as Director of Sports, Patrick Matre. That's your update for today from Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. And now for a look at what's happening with St. Lucians in the diaspora. A St. Lucian has accomplished an incredible career high. Food Safety Magazine recently announced that Theodora Morrill Hines will receive the magazine's Distinguished Service Award at the 2019 Annual Meeting of the International Association for Food Protection next month. The Grizzly native, popularly known as Merle, is a graduate of the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School and studied microbiology at Long Island University. Theodore Morrill Hines joined the Kellogg Company as a Senior Director of Global Food Safety and Sanitation in July 2011 and was promoted to Vice President of Global Quality Food Safety in November 2013. Prior to joining Kellogg, she was employed by Kraft in Tartown, New York. Moral Hines is, one, is on the Food Safety Advisory Board of the University of Georgia and Tuskegee University. She is also President of the Board of Safe and Secure Approaches to Field Environments and affiliated with a number of industry associations. She advocated and secured funding for the Center for Research on Ingredient Safety, which was formed to ensure credible, relevant information on ingredient safety is accessible to a wide range of decision makers at Michigan State University. Theodore Morrill Hines, another St. Lucian, making great strides on the international stage. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquayon. Imagine being away from home, surrounded by danger and hostility, unable to escape or speak the language, and being exploited. It might sound like fiction, but for 40 million victims of human trafficking worldwide, it is a reality. Innocent people enticed 
by the promise of a new life, then enslaved into forced labor or sex trafficking. Human trafficking happens in plain sight. Know the signs, see it, report it. To report suspected cases of human trafficking, call the TIP hotline at 847. Welcome back. We join Paramus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueo. Monsieur Tant Nisher, Monsieur Madame de Patmakini was responsable for information on gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, à ce moment-là, Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, à vous êtes au Nouvelle Acquéole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Ministre de Santé, j'ai placé un appel pour le peuple pays à prendre la poussière des êtres Sahara, qui a sorti juste Afrique. Si l'on a pas de ministère, vent qu'a vanté la poussière, ça là, entre mois septembre pour avril, et qu'a vanté sorti en plusieurs pays d'Afrique pour qu'on ait avec l'autre pays. Le ministère de Santé a fait cette liste et savent que la poussière ça là, a affecté l'air et a porté un badjo qui est bien petit, mais il a affecté aussi le monde et ça a uh, entré un système sans aussi. Alors, les gens qui ont des conditions de problèmes d'exploration, de potions, de maladies chères, sont aussi des conditions sans cahier, situation de la poussière à la route Sahara qui a affecté. Le ministère de Santé a fait le peuple la savoir que les gens qui ont souffert et puis la potion, ils ont développé des problèmes et puis l'exploration, mal l'estomac et le mauvais tout ce qui a affecté aussi. Pour ça, le ministère a conseillé les personnes qui ont expérimenté des conditions par ces maladies, par exemple, la potion, les problèmes et puis l'exploration, les problèmes de chair pour servir ces remèdes-là qui ont été pour traiter ces maladies, comme le docteur Mado pour faire. Mais, si les conditions sont venues plus critiques, il est nécessaire pour aller au tir et au docteur. Tout le monde qui peut souffrir et puis ces conditions, le ministère de Santé a conseillé pour ne pas participer dans pièces pièce d'activité qui a porté trop de force à sous de autant la poussière à la capacité. Le représentatif en le Parlement pour Castri, honorable Sarah Flood Bobre, j'ai bienvenu à l'action pour régler les lois qui n'est pour faire épicer santé publique et faire référence principalement pour activités qui amènent à la santé publique et qui ont dans ces activités là c'est des ordres qui sont affectés ni santé aussi manière ni un individu qui a comporté quoi selon recherche que j'ai faite des ordres ça l'occasionne un monde souffert et puis prêcheur et aussi ça chagrine l'esprit ou un individu ça veut dire ça une cause pour venir sud et puis affecter manière un monde qui a dormi on a Bobrin déclaré qu'il est bien satisfait à présent que la législation pour gouverner la santé publique déjà à présent prend en considération que des ordres qui sont trop forts, ça a une cause de problème qui est très sérieux en santé pays. Mais ce Bobrin a annoncé qu'il j'ai trouvé un pile plainte que j'ai fait contre des ordres et dit qu'il j'ai trouvé lettre, pétition écrit avec l'autre façon de communication que j'ai fait contre ces deux autres salariés. Il aussi dit que j'ai acheté une discussion et puis le conseil de ville Castri, autorité Kai à Castri et la police, parce que j'ai trouvé autant de plaintes contre Jacques Castri contre des gouets ces deux autres salariés en ville. Le ministre Bobrin a vu qu'il y a apprécié que là où il dans une ville, il y a toujours des autres plus que l'autre côté. Mais des gouets des autres qui existaient en ville Castri présentement, pas acceptable, pièce seulement. Il y a aussi aussi en l'autre place en pays parce que ça a occasionné un problème qui est très sérieux et puis ça a été bon. Mais cela aussi, bienvenue, établissement plus officier de santé publique parce que c'est officier ça là, car il s'est mis à des groupes, des ordres qui ont fait possible aussi pour enforcer la législation. Il y a un mot sur la législation pour mettre en bout à son importation production, la vente et service styrofoam et container plastique pour mettre manger, j'ai trouvé passer à Kaye Parlement. Ça a été fait mardi le 11 juin et ça a été pour tuer législation 9 pour mettre en bout ce service sala pendant ce produit sala ni l'avantage parce qu'il n'y a pas qu'à en tout ni chalet et pas cher. Il n'y a quand même pas qu'à pour oui après ou déposer. Alors ça a affecté le monde de pays et j'ai l'occasion pour établir la loi pour effacer le service nettement. Selon le ministre des Affaires Jeunesse et du Développement Sport, on est Edmond Stéphane. Ça a fait par phase côté monde, parce qu'il a importé plat, bol, fourchette, couteau, tuyer et l'autre comme ça. 
tout ça qui est debout le 1er août 2020 pour la première phase. là. Selon le Premier ministre Honorable Chasney, l'année avait la l'autre façon pour trouver ces services là Il servit, pour exemple, côté yon sa servi yon papier en du plastique pour boire. Le Premier ministre a dit que même quand à présent les pratiques ont adopté l'habitude pour acheter qu'à servir bague, yo même à même façon, yo, yo s'apporte potio et l'autre la brise pour servir un jour servir ces plastiques là. L'année à ce point qui bon premier à août 2021, la bague a une pièce plastique qui a un service à cette liste. D'accord. Et c'est pour ça nous vous nouvelle là, monsieur, madame, moi car je me suis autant pour garder, moi car une invitation. Je ne puis moi encore c'est dire qu'on savait la vie, les gars posent toi l'autre nouvelle créole. À présent, moi car vie posent toi Michel. Merci on Pale Primus. And here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Saharan dust haze will cause a reduction in visibility and shower activity around the Eastern Caribbean region during the next couple of days. Two tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The tide for Castries Harbour was low at 3.41 p.m. and will be high again at 10.14 p.m. The tide for VFOR Bay was low at 5.08 p.m. and will be high again at 11.21 p.m. The seas, moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 7 feet or 1.2 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to above normal seas and reduced visibility. The sun will rise Wednesday at 5.38 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. Mm -hmm.